everyone, it's the weekend and it's a beautiful day outside and Hubby and I are going to pop out today. We're going to this, it's not a supermarket, it's more, if you're from England, imagine B&Q but with a supermarket combined. That's where we're going today. We've got some tomato plants that we've been growing so we need to go and get some food for them. We've got plenty of soil but we've noticed that the ones that came in the original tin it's these tomatoes grow, you, that you grow in a tin and they come with the soil already. They're doing really well, but the ones that we've already repotted, they don't seem to be doing as well. So I think they probably need some kind of fertilizer or some kind of tomato food. So that's what we're going out to get today and we thought we'd take you along with us. These are the tomato plants. They originally came in this tin and it was just some soil with a bag of seeds. We've been growing them since October, I think. So it's been three months and these ones are doing really well. But we had so many shoots come through that we had to repot them and then we repotted them into this. These ones don't seem to be doing as well. They're more of a pale green and they're not looking as healthy and as vibrant as the other ones. So we're going to try and go and find some food for them. We live in Yokohama in Japan, which is Japan's second largest city. And we live in the central business district known as Minatomurai 21. It was developed in the 1980s. Minatomurai actually means port of the future, so Minatomurai 21 is port of the future as in the 21st century. It's a lovely area, really nice shopping malls, bars, restaurants, lots of things to do and a lot of large Japanese companies have their headquarters here. So we have the Nissan um, headquarters and they have a gallery where they display lots of different types of cars. This is probably my husband's territory. They display lots of fancy cars. Pat, do you want to tell them a bit about the cars? Yeah, basically they have lots of uh, old Nissans from sort of 19, early 1900s all the way through to modern day in some of the concept cars. And the uh, museum has a revolving display, so it changes, I think it's every four weeks or five weeks. Um, and currently they've got a few hybrid um, concept cars on display. So it's definitely worth a visit if you're ever in Yokohama. I'm just going to show you around. Uh, you might recognise Landmark Tower there from the previous vlog that we did. And then next to it, you've, the, there are three Queen's Towers here, Queen's Tower A, B and C, which are office blocks with shopping malls. The third one you won't be able to see because it's a lot shorter, so they decrease in size as you go from A to Z. It's a beautiful day today, very sunny and quite mild. I think it's about 8-9 degrees. There's a huge telecommunications tower. So it's December, the flowers are still in bloom because December, it's not December actually, what am I saying? It's January 2015. January is still mild here, even though we had snow on New Year's Day, it was just a few flurries. We're still walking to the Japanese B&Q and I just thought I'd give you a different view of Landmark Tower. It's a very aztec -y looking building. It's one of my favorites in Japan. That's where we're going, Sekichu. In Japan on the pavements there are designated walkways for cyclists and pedestrians. The pavement is split into two but generally from what we've seen people don't tend to observe them all the time. People cycle a lot in Japan which is great, great for the environment and great for their health and they tend to cycle on the pavements. The store has snow shovels out at the front. It's our first winter here, so we don't know how bad the snow is going to be. We've only had a flurry on New Year's Day, but I'm assuming it could be pretty bad. Most items for sale in Japan will have two prices. The lower price is without tax, and the higher price is with tax, and I think tax is currently 8%. 8%, yeah. Hey, daffodils, look. I love daffodils, it's a sign that spring is here, although I think in Japan we've still got a few more wintry months before spring. I think spring officially starts in March, there is a public holiday when the seasons change, I think that's sometime in March. Right, let's go inside the store. Mm. 
These are not real. They, ooh, but these look like fresh flowers. Yep, they're real. Real tulips. Lots and lots of DIY tools. We found tomato food. I think this is all plant food. We also found liquid tomato food. One bottle's green at a different price and one bottle is red. No idea what the difference is. This is the fun of Japan, not being able to read Japanese. Half the time we really don't know what we're buying. It's all about trial and error. So here you can buy everything from shoes to garden accessories and tools. Is that actual paint? Yeah, it's paint, it's in a pouch. Oh. Um, and of course you can buy clothing. And then there's a food store. But we're going to go upstairs to the home furniture and pets. You can buy pets in the Japanese B&Q. We just found what we think is the Japanese version of hot water bottles. So it's made of plastic and you fill it here and then the instruction says you put the sleeve on and it comes with a sleeve. There's this which I think is to keep your feet warm. Um, uh, it's very heavy. Uh, oh, okay, so the microwave patches and you warm them up and then wrap them around your feet. That's the washing detergent aisle, toiletries over there. The actual supermarket grocery food section's closed because the barriers are down. So I think it's still a bank holiday here from the new year. Upstairs you can buy anything from office furniture, home furniture, rice cookers, electrical goods to suitcases, doggy prams and even puppies and kittens. To show everyone the doggy prams, let's go and find the doggy prams and then we'll go to the pet section. Oh cool, it falls down. Lots and lots of bicycles. Camping and barbecue stuff. And here we are in the pet section. It's huge. <laughs> it's a little toy. Doggy pram. Oh, I like the red one. Do you know this would be great to put your shopping in as well? Not just your little doggy. Wow. Oh, just those three models. And how much are they? They are so this one is eighteen thousand one hundred and forty four yen. Tax. That's about a hundred pounds. Doggy collars. Little puppies. Don't know if you can see, it's got a water bottle in the back there. That one's cute, it's like a teddy bear. Oh, he's got sleepy eyes. He, he looks very sleepy. So tiny. People can actually buy these, can't they? Yeah, these the, I think these are the prices. Oh wow. It's a picture of his face. This one is, wow. To buy him it's 178,000 yen. Which, which is a thousand British pounds. Oh, it's a cat, little kitten. Not sure how I feel about them being kept in these little spaces, but it just seems to be the thing here in Japan. Konnichiwa. Arigatou gozaimasu. So people come to this store and they can actually select a puppy or a kitten. Play out, just play out here. There's a lady, store lady, with a little puppy, and you, you can actually play with them, spend a bit of time with them before deciding whether you want to buy them and take them home as a pet. They're not cheap. 
Like I said, you're looking at about best part of about a thousand pounds. But there are quite a few of these little animal pet centres. There's one in um, Marcus, which is a popular shopping mall in Manatamurai. This one's decided that um, biting his own feet uh, is a good idea. Oh, now it's the tail. He's chasing his own tail. Why do dogs do that? I don't know. I don't have a tail to chase. So you wouldn't know. <laughs> but we also have fish. Oh, these are the easy ones, aren't they? Fish. Fairly easy to look after. Wow, those are bright. Oh, look at these. Snails and these tiny, I don't know what they are, these some parasites off the snails, I think. That is weird, look at that. In here we have some birds. Ooh, chickens, that is a small, tight little space for those little chickens. Hens, hens, that's what I meant. Ooh, it smells in here as well. Kind of reptile. Pet beds. There are so many different types of pet toys in Japan, it's absolutely crazy. No idea what that is, but I don't know if it's some kind of heated with a symbol. Is that like a, I don't know. Yeah, heated. It's, vest. Heat, it's heated vest with a doggy. And there's a grooming parlour over here for us. Oh, is there? Treats for the pets. Oh, it's a doggy parlour. It's having a haircut. So in Japan, people still have these seals made and carry them around in a small pouch. And instead of signing your name, what you do is you just stamp a piece of paper with your seal. And it's still, I mean, even in um, just going to the post office, they might ask you for your seal or uh, if you're signing documents officially for business, seal still is the, the way for, uh, forward. So it's like a stamped version of your signature? Yeah. But not your signature, it's your name? Your name, yeah. We've been asked if we have seals, but we don't. We don't have name stamps. What's it look like? So it has the text and then that's it. And I assume these are pre-made names, but you can just go and get your name made. We're just about to go downstairs to go and get this smarter food before making our way home and then we spotted these massage chairs and you can actually try them out. Do you understand the remote control? It's no. all going to be in Japanese. I have no idea, I'm just pressing buttons things are happening. <laughs> Is it good? So what are you having massage right now? Your calves have been done, I can see the little and my leg squeezer things going. You have some what, sorry? And my back. Your back. Yeah. yeah, I can see that moving. And that one is just over 86,000 yen. Let's buy two. Check this one out. This one. This one's a fabric one. Okay, I'm sat in a massage chair now as well. And I have to say, this is really good. This is better than the Japanese massage I've been to a few weeks ago. I've only been for one massage since I've been here, and it was quite strange because you have to wear tracksuit bottom and then a t-shirt, either full sleeved or half sleeved. And then you lie on the massage bed and the masseuse strips a towel over you. So you actually do massage through two layers of clothing, which is very different to the massages I've had in the past. And it was also very kind of like pokey with fingertips and acupressure points. 
and it didn't quite do the trick whereas I actually think these cherries are better than that. One of the things that I really miss about living in Singapore is Pauline, my masseuse, my Thai masseuse. She used to do a fantastic job of getting all the knots out of my body. Um, for those of you that don't know, I suffer from arthritis in most of the joints in my body, so I have a lot of kind of like muscle tension and fatigue, and you know, my ligaments get very knotted and painful, so I used to go for a regular Thai massage that used to help a lot. But since moving to Japan, it's one of the things that I've struggled to find a replacement for. Well, I think this chair is doing a pretty good job. If you're new to Glistening Sheen, then you may not know this, but Hubby and I, we're from the UK, born and bred in England. And for the last few years, we've been living in Singapore. And just a few months ago, we moved to Japan. And Japan is such a unique country with such a unique culture, and it's so different to anywhere else in the world that we've had so many family and friends asking us what it's like to live here that I finally decided to start showing people and that's what we're doing today. Okay, Hubby has moved along to try the next chair and he's made himself very comfortable. He's taken his jacket off, he's got his shoes off so he can try the foot massage. I've got two different socks on, I'm so lucky. Oh my god, you, you've got a blue sock and a black sock. How did you manage to do that? Well, I thought I couldn't find any that much, so I was too lazy, basically. Are we going to buy the tomato food anytime soon? <laughs> Is there something you want to tell us? You seem to be cradling your bump there. <laughs> I'm hungry. You're hungry? There isn't something growing in there, is there? <laughs> Hubby's gone to buy the tomato food, um, pay for that, so I thought I'd show you these. There are vending machines literally everywhere in Japan, from inside shopping malls to stores like this, um, train station platforms. Most of them sell a variety of drinks. So we've got some Coca-Cola there. different kind of flavoured teas, mineral water, coffee is really popular in the vending machines, lots of different brands. Got some Evian. Tully's? Oh yeah, that is Tully's. First time I've seen that. Tully's in a vending machine, Tully's coffee. Some jasmine tea. Different fruit teas. I think that's peach juice. And you also get ice cream vending machines. We've never tried one of these, it's quite cold for an ice cream at the moment. But um, a huge variety. I know people think you can buy used underwear from vending machines in Japan. It's a rumor that I've seen a lot online, people talking about it in forums, but I've yet to see one. And maybe I've just not been to the right places. Or it could be with just one of these made up things and you know it's caught on and people think now you can buy used underwear from vending machines. I don't think you can. Or maybe you can, I've just never seen it. The other thing that's very big in Japan is umbrellas. You get stores dedicated to umbrellas, different types of umbrellas. So really in Japan, it's almost treated like a fashion accessory, the way we would with shoes and handbags. And there, there are so many different colors and styles and types. This is not a shop that specializes in umbrellas, but even then there's a huge, huge selection. Did you get it? Okay, let's go home and sort the tomato plants out. It's a doggy pram. We're back to where we started. Ooh, the sun is bright. And there's Landmark Tower again. 